Hello! In this video, I'd like to show you some of the new features of SonarWiz 6 bathymetry by demonstrating how to process a small survey. We'll start with an empty project, which I've already opened up to here, and then open our vessel editor. The first step to processing bathymetry in SonarWiz is to define a vessel and locate all of our instruments on the vessel. The SonarWiz vessel editor is designed to be intuitive to use. That is a nice graphical display of the vessel and all of the instruments installed. You can see that I've already added an MRU and position sensor, as well as the 6205 SWAS system. If I double click on the SWAS system, it opens up a dialog where I can adjust the properties of the 6205. SonarWiz knows that the 6205 is a dual channel system and will automatically configure the vessel with the manufacturer offsets. As a user, you need only adjust the lever arms for your installation. Once that's done, it's easy to save the vessel and use it in other projects. The next thing to load into the project is our auxiliary data, such as tides, sound velocity profiles, and post-process navigation and attitude data if you have them. Here's our tide editor and our sound velocity profile editor. Sometimes importing data can be a real chore. There are a wide variety of formats in common use. Each of our import editors have a built-in template system that makes it easy to create a new template and save the template for future use. Here's an example. I've imported a sound velocity profile in a custom format used by the USGS during a recent cruise. On the left, you can see the text file, and on the right is a list of stored templates already created. If I go to the USGS template, the header lines are highlighted in gray, and the data columns are highlighted in blue. By using the tools on the right-hand side, I can quickly parse most tabular files. Click Import, and the data is loaded, and the template is saved for the next time you need it. Now that we've got our vessel configured and our aux data loaded, we can import the raw bathymetry files. SonarWiz supports most SWAS systems in production. Single and dual-headed multi-beams and most multi-channel interferometers are supported. For this demo, we'll load a few files. It doesn't take long to import the bathymetry. Initially, we see only the trackline data. Our first task is to merge the bathymetry with the auxiliary data during the merge process. Highlight the lines to merge and click the Merge button. The Merge wizard controls how the bathymetry data will be produced, including how details like the sound velocity profiles and vertical data will be applied. The next page of the wizard allows you to apply filters after the merge process. Because SonarWiz is designed to process both multi-beam and interferometric data, we've included a large number of powerful filters to clean up your data before you do any manual editing. We try to set the filters to sensible default values for all the systems we support, and usually you can click through the screen and get a first cut at your data without even looking at them. Once you know what particular filters you might need, you can go back and change the default settings as desired and run the filters again on just the, on one or more of the selected files. The edge tech data we're looking at today processes very well with just the default settings. Now that the data has been merged, SonarWiz immediately displays the raw point cloud. Here it is colored by depth. If we draw a profile perpendicular to the track lines, you can see that the roll values of the lines are way off. This will give me a chance to show off our patch test tool. I click the patch test tool and draw a polygon perpendicular to the track lines in about the same area as our profile. This will open up the SonarWiz Patch Test Calibration Tool. Initially, what you see is a 3D view of the bathymetry inside the polygon we selected. The bathymetry is colored by track line, and you can see the vessel track and direction by the large arrows over the top of the bathymetry. We can calibrate the port and starboard channels of the edge tech using the same profile line, so we draw a profile perpendicular to the track lines like this. The PTC now splits the screen, showing the profile across the top of the screen, and the 3D view remains at the bottom of the screen. You can draw a new profile if you want. On the control panel, we select transducer 0, the port transducer, and recalculate the roll value for this channel. The PTC will calculate the optimum angle between all overlapping port-to-port -port lines and plot the V-graph results on the side. If you're satisfied with the results, you can move on to the starboard transducer and run the test again. You can also manually tweak the numbers by using the slider over here on the left-hand side. 
Now that we've got good values for the port and starboard roll, we save them to the vessel and close the PTC. To apply the new roll values, we need to re-merge the data. You don't need to go through the whole wizard again because SonarWiz remembers all of your previous settings. Once the merge is done, the bathymetry will look a lot better. SonarWiz has some great backscatter processing tools, so let's switch from coloring the points by bathymetry value to coloring them by backscatter. What we're looking at here is the raw, uncorrected backscatter. The backscatter here needs some beam angle adjustment and some contrast stretching. Using SonarWiz fully automatic empirical gain algorithm, we can clean up this data very easily. The EGN algorithm looks at all of the data in the dataset and optimizes the gain normalization function. Running EGN doesn't require much user interaction at all. You simply select the files you want to apply the correction to and then hit OK. The default settings will work with most datasets. It makes two passes through the data, so for very large data sets, it can take a few minutes, but for this small one, it only takes a few seconds to run through everything. And the results are pretty dramatic. Now we can see the backscatter is consistent across the swath, overlapping swaths match, and there's a strong contrast over the man-made debris. We can take a better look at the structures using the 3D area editor. Again, I'm going to draw an arbitrary polygon and load the point cloud into the editor. The editor opens in a split screen. The top of the display shows a grid representation of the data. The bottom screen shows a point cloud of the data colored by backscatter amplitude. Again, SonarWiz provides a large number of automatic and semi-automatic filter functions that can quickly clean up a noisy data set. Being able to see the backscatter amplitude directly in the editor is a powerful tool for cleaning up data around man-made structures, wrecks, and reefs when it's sometimes difficult to distinguish between noise and attached vegetation or abandoned fishing tackle. This edge tech data is pretty clean already and doesn't need much help from us. To make a GeoTIFF of our backscatter and display it in Google Earth, go to the Export tab and create a mosaic of our backscatter. This is the same way you would work with side scan data. Now create a KMZ file from the mosaic. SonarWiz will open Google Earth automatically to show you the results. If you want to export the bathymetry to your GIS system as a raster or grid, simply select the bathy data sets you want to integrate and then create a new raster. You can create the main grid and statistical summary grids at the same time. Here we'll just select the median. It takes a moment or two for the grids to create in the background, and then they're loaded automatically into the project. Once the grids are created, you can view them in SonarWiz or export them into one of more than a dozen common export formats. SonarWiz grids can also be viewed in the SonarWiz 3D Viewer, where they can be combined with backscatter, sub-bottom profile ribbons, point clouds, and other ancillary data you might have. Here I'll show you how to drape the backscatter mosaic over the bathymetry. First, let's color the bathymetry. That looks better. We can play around with the view and change the vertical exaggeration. So next we'll load in the geo-referenced image that we created for our Google Earth mosaic. The 3D editor loads it into the project and floats it above the bathymetry. If you select the image, you can then drop it down below like this, or even better yet, drape it directly over the top of the bathymetry. Select the grid and change its color pattern to the backscatter amplitude. The 3D editor is pretty cool and it makes it easy to review many types of 3D geophysical data, but it requires a SonarWiz license to use. For clients who don't have access to SonarWiz, 
we can take any scene in the 3D viewer and export it to a 3D PDF report, which will allow clients to view the scene without SonarWiz, Google Earth, or in fact any GIS at all. They just need a modern version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. So that's just a small taste of what we put into SonarWiz Bathymetry. If you're interested in learning more about SonarWiz, please Google SonarWiz or go to www.chesapeaketech.com where you can request a 30-day free trial. Thanks for watching.